Okay, people, hold it down. End of the world, take one. Um, anytime, Sydney. At first, it looks like kind of a fireball. It grows bigger and bigger by the minute. Soon, it seems to be larger than the sun. People are frozen to the spot with their eyes glued to the sky. They haven't realized yet they have to run for their lives. Not that it's going to help. The asteroid slams into the planet with enormous force. It doesn't stop moving until it gets through the crust to a depth of several miles. Thousands of cubic miles of solid rock instantly turn into vapor. Everything and everyone close enough to see the crash don't live longer than a few seconds. The ground around the impact crater is covered with thousands of feet of hot ash, grit, and rubble. Mere seconds after the collision, grass, trees, and shrubbery for many miles away burst into flames. But that's not all. The crash sets off a series of natural disasters, like tsunamis. What didn't burn down within the first several minutes gets flooded. In some places, tsunami waves are higher than a thousand feet. Earthquakes start to shake the planet. Less than an hour after the asteroid crashed into the planet, a gust of wind whips through the world. Its speed is more than 600 miles per hour. The hurricane flattens down everything that is standing and scatters debris for miles around. A bit farther away from the impact zone, the sky is starting to darken. That's why beautiful shooting stars seem even brighter. But those aren't stars, that's debris raining back on the planet. They re-enter Earth's atmosphere, glowing ominous red because of the infrared radiation. These are just the first hours after the crash, but the sky is almost completely black. By the time it begins to get lighter, there's no life on the planet. The ash is still in the air. When it rains, the water gets highly acidic. Fires keep raging. They produce tons of toxins that destroy the ozone layer. Earth loses its last shield against the radiation from the sun. Okay, I don't like that one. Too much doom and gloom. Um, what else we got? Well, or the end of the world could look quite different. One day, a rogue planet might push Earth out of the habitable zone and into an extreme orbit farther from the sun. The climate all over the planet starts getting colder and colder. It becomes impossible to live close to the poles. All life gathers near the equator. Quite soon, half of the planet turns into an icy desert. There's a lack of food and other resources. It's getting darker and darker. There's not enough light for plants to get energy. They wither, and animals that used to feed on them can't find food and go extinct. The farther our planet is from the sun, the weaker the star's gravitational pull on our planet is. In the end, our beautiful Earth gets too far away from its main source of light and heat. It turns into a lifeless piece of rock covered with a thick layer of ice. Nah, I don't like that ending either. Leaves me cold. Anything else? Or the sun might expand and turn into a red giant. If it happens, it'll change the entire habitable zone of the solar system. It starts when our star runs out of the hydrogen in its core. This triggers several reactions. In the end, the core heats up and gets denser, which makes the sun way larger. During this transformation, the sun swallows Venus, Mercury, and Earth. The expanding star engulfs our planet even before it reaches the tip of its giant red phase. It still has around half a million years to grow. As soon as Earth is inside the Sun's atmosphere, its orbit changes. The planet spirals inward inside the star's raging heat. But no one and nothing is around to witness it. Long before that, the Sun evaporates all the oceans on our planet. In the end, Earth becomes molten. Uh, molten, huh? Nah, that's too hot to try. Try again. Okay. Or it might be something vastly different. People all over the world wake up in the middle of the night. It's as light as in the morning, but it's not sunlight. The skies are illuminated with countless auroras. Red, green, purple. They appear even in the regions where no one has seen them before, like the Bahamas, Jamaica, or Hawaii. The sun is a gigantic, constantly changing ball of burning gases. 
Every once in a while, it spews out bursts of energy. Those are solar flares. They are often accompanied by coronal mass ejections. So, this time, the Sun has produced an epic geomagnetic storm and unleashed it at our planet's protective layer. Waves of charged particles slam into Earth's atmosphere. The planet's magnetic field isn't powerful enough to stop this. It gives way, and the storm hits Earth, causing havoc. It starts by disrupting GPS and knocking out satellites. After that, the storm interferes with satellite communications. But one of the worst consequences is connected with power grids. Power surges caused by the particles coming from the Sun damage giant transformers. Earth is left without electricity for years. There's no light, no computers, no phones. Water supply systems are out of order. There's no food in supermarkets. There's no electricity, and people can't reboot the already broken power grids. Wildlife takes over the planet, creating some kind of a post-apocalyptic world. Yeah, I think we should let the monkeys run things for a while. <laughs> they can't do any worse. All right, what else? Ooh, if you had the gamma ray vision, you'd be able to see immensely bright flashes. They occur every day, outshine everything around you, then disappear again. Those flashes are gamma ray bursts. One of them might wipe out Earth's atmosphere. The flash that's going to ruin our planet was born in a faraway galaxy where two collapsed stars merged. It's immensely powerful. It carries 10 quadrillion, which is one followed by 16 zeros, times as much energy as our Sun. When the burst is 1,000 light years away from Earth, it's already shining as bright as our Sun. Our planet's atmosphere is trying to protect us once the burst comes too close. But this shield doesn't last. The radiation is so powerful that it literally cooks the atmosphere. It creates nitrogen oxides that destroy the ozone layer. Without this layer, ultraviolet rays coming from the Sun hit Earth's surface at full force. They wipe out tiny plankton in the ocean. These plankton produce from 50 to 70 percent of all oxygen on our planet. They disappear, and soon there's a severe lack of oxygen. Terrestrial life vanishes first. After that, living creatures start to disappear from seas and oceans. In the end, the heat and ultraviolet light coming from the sun turns the planet into a huge chunk of barren rock. Never mind, I don't like any of these. Let's just keep the Earth the way it is, okay? Hey, Sydney, why don't we blow up Mars or something? 